Um, I'm so humbled to see the kind of progress that um, God has achieved through the people of God here. I witnessed the, I was privileged to witness the beginning of this ministry in the United Kingdom. Coming here today, I've been looking around at the transformation. And, um, you know, I was amazed, but I begin to ask myself why I'm amazed because it's God that is taking the people of God on this journey. And I give glory to God for that. And I want to thank you for cooperating with God to use you to uh, increase or uh, increase his kingdom. Now, this morning, we're going to talk, or I believe God is going to speak to us about the topic that I've titled, Increasing Your Capacity. But before we go into that, I want us to just lift up Jesus in the next two minutes. And I want us to see this up. We'll lift your name We'll lift your name. 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 Magnify yourself and glorify your name. And let only you be exalted. Thank you, faithful Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. So the study test is taken from 2 Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. And I read from verse 1 to verse 6. 2 Kings chapter 4, I read from verse 1 to verse 6. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not jo gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your, and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that he said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So they all ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons leave on the rest. See, many of us ask for 
certain graces and endowments without first developing capacity to contain them. It's so crucial and necessary to acquire and develop capacity for greater heights that you desire. You know, our theme this year in Christ's Assembly is Year of Great Exploits. And this month's um, theme is Commanding Extraordinary Results. You see, you don't operate in this dimension just by reciting these themes. Because when you do that, it just becomes another cliché. You operate in this dimension by increasing your capacity to acquire the enablement to function at this higher level. And that's why we are giving glory to God for where he has brought Northampton Church to as a people. We thank God for the growth. We thank God for the expansion. We thank God for the increase. We thank God for the impact that CIA Northampton is making in this community. And this is reverberating all over the world. There was this mission week you did, and I was getting calls from all over the world, from the U.S. and from so many places, about what CIA Northampton is doing and how it has um, encouraged um, so many church organizations to start thinking about the way they are operating their church. You may not know the kind of impact you are making, but people are watching you. And you are inspiring so many to change their perspective about the way they do ministry. But this that is happening in Northampton will not be, could not be, will not be possible without people that are involved in managing the affairs of the church expanding their capacity. You did not start this way. There was a way you started, and people were seeing a lot of inadequacies. But later on, you started increasing your capacity, enlarging your capacity, such that people are looking at you as models. God does not have problem in increasing us. The problem is in our, in, in our inability to increase our capacity to contain what God is releasing into our lives to function maximally in the assignment committed into our hands. And that's why I want us to examine the case of this widow in 2 Kings chapter 4. We read it earlier on. And you see that this widow had a problem that was a threat to her future. She had a huge debt that she did not have the capacity to liquidate. And the only option she had in liquidating this debt was to trade up the only hope of her life. And that, those are her two children. Because she has earlier lost her husband. And um, you will agree with me, especially in those days, losing a husband is a big deal. Because responsibility of taking care of families in those days rests majorly on the husband. So the day she lost her husband, she would have thought all has been lost. But then she started encouraging herself with the children, that these children are there. And then debt kept mounting up. I got to a stage, and there was no means of paying off those debt. It got a stake, the creditor started knocking on the door. I said, pay this debt. I said, please, 
the husband is dead, nobody, we don't have means of livelihood. Well, in that case, we are going to take your children. And uh, I mean, she um, was wondering that maybe this is the end. Then the prophet appeared, prophet Elisha. And I pre believe before that time, she would have prayed. She would have cried in the secret place in her rooms. And she would have been wondering why she was in that condition. Because when you read that chapter 4, verse 1, we, can, we could see that she expressed a, a, a certain thing that um, we can see uh, this expressed in what she told Elisha. In that uh, second chapter, verse, he said, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know your servant feared the Lord. Now, she was one of she was the wife of one of the prophets. And from that account, it showed that her husband was one of the dedicated prophets or ministers of those days. And she was she would be wondering, what is God looking at? My husband served the Lord. My husband labored in the vineyard. Now, he's no more. And then God is just looking at us. And um, he does not care about what is happening. And uh, that's why many of us are usually disappointed. When it seems that God is not showing us for us in our moments of needs. Especially when we believe that we've tried to do the right things. We become disillusioned we start asking questions. Why me? Why? Why is this happening? But the truth is that many times it's our inability to expand our capacity to develop the, uh, the, the kind of capacity that we need to contain what God has in stock for us as solutions to our challenges. And that is what may probably be delaying the answers to some of our prayers. And that was what Elisha was addressing when he told her to go and borrow vessels. You know, when she asked her, what do you have? She said he had nothing except the oil. He said nothing. You know, she had oil, but she said he had nothing because she did not look at that oil as anything significant to be able to help. I'm going to address that one later. So, but when she said he had nothing but oil, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3, Elisha Natua, he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. He said, Empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Now, there is a place in the Bible, Isaiah chapter 54, and uh, verses 2 and 3, I will, I will read it. He said, Enlarge the place. Of your tent. Let them stretch out the contents of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your sticks. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendant will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. You know, here, God uh, was promising his people that he was going to make them their descendant to inherit the nations. Now, at that time, maybe they were a small group of people. But they said, um, you are, your descendants are going to inherit the nations. But for that to happen, you have to do something. He said, you have to enlarge your tent. Now, God was not saying, I'm going to enlarge your tent for you. He said, enlarge your tent. Let them stretch out the country of dwellings for what I want to do for you. So, who will do the enlargement? Who will do the increase of capacity? Now, then, it's, so God does not have problem in releasing graces, um, anointing, or whatever we need to go to higher heights. But it's our responsibility to make sure that we increase 
our capacity to contain what God has in, pro, in, in stock for us. So, when, God, and when Elijah told that woman, what he was trying to say is that um, God does not have a problem in giving you the resources, but you have to enlarge your capacity. You have to increase your capacity. Because if we start releasing it now, maybe she will just bring some buckets they have in the house, um, whichever they, and by the time the oil starts flowing, when it fills those buckets, then the oil will stop. Because if God starts releasing those oils, it will run into waste, and it will be wasteful. So, God, while God has no problem increasing us in life and ministry, it's our responsibility to expand or increase our capacity. Now, she obeyed Elisha, and she went out to borrow many vessels and started pouring the oil. And as she was pouring the oil to those vessels, the oil did not stop flowing until there was no container to accommodate it. And that's why in verse 6, the Bible says in verse 6 of that um, 2 Corinthians 4, um, uh, it said, Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is no other vessel. So the oil ceased. So graces, anointing, even finances, will be released into your life according to your capacity to handle them. Now, God will even not re uh, release financial resources to people's life because they don't have the capacity to handle them. Because if God released that amount of wealth, resources, that may be what will destroy that person. Because he has not increased that capacity for God to trust him with that kind of resources. And that's why God will not even release some anointing on some people. No matter how they pray. Because that anointing will destroy them. And that's why you see some people, they just have a little measure of grace and anointing. You see them shouting everywhere. And then, I mean, turning themselves into mini-God. And that's why God, when God loves you, you will ask for those things, but he will not give you, not because he does not love you, but he's expecting you to increase your capacity to uh, uh, continue. And I believe because CI in Northampton, you'll be increasing your capacity. Amen. Yeah, because through the teachings you've been um, having, I listened to many of your teachings, and I, I saw that the, the, the kind of teachings that increase people's capacity especially those people that make use of those teachings. And, you know, Pastor Henry can teach you, but he will not force you to uh, connect to the study and apply it to your life. And you see that as many people are, are, are connecting to it and applying to their lives, their capacity will be increasing, and it will be obvious. Therefore, if you want more increase, you need to expand your capacity to accommodate the increase. Now, notice, when Elisha asked the widow about what she had on hand, like I said before, she heard they had nothing but a jar of oil. She underestimated the value of the item she had because it seems little in her hand. Actually, when she was looking at it, and even if we look at it, it was little. You see, those things or those gift things that look small to you will increase when you enlarge your capacity. Because God deposited that one into your life according to the capacity, your present capacity. So when you enlarge your capacity, you will see those gift things increasing. There are some people that God has released upon, like the gifting of prophecy or other spiritual gifts. But or they could uh, maybe dreams or all those gifts. But they don't exercise it. They don't use it. They don't uh, uh, um, some people have the gift of healing. They don't even exercise such things. They don't use it. So uh, why would God now increase it? Now you see people that are sick. Maybe you have the grace of healing. You don't pray for them. You don't have to find time. Maybe it's for you, your son, your children, you and your, you, I, me, and myself. 
do you, how do you expect now to increase such giftings upon you? You have gift to um, talk to people, draw them to Jesus, and then you just you don't go for evangelism. You don't do this, and you expect God to increase grace to win souls into the kingdom. So the more you exercise it, and then you more you uh, stretch it, then you will see that God will be releasing more into you, and then your capacity will be increasing. So when um, so when those giftings. Uh, uh, those things and giftings that you look uh, that look too small to you will increase when you enlarge your capacity. Those giftings look little to you because you are satisfied with the level you are. When you pray for increase on those little things, remember to first increase your capacity to accommodate the higher grace you are asking for. So the question now will be, how then do I increase my capacity? Number one. Stretch yourself. You know, here uh, at that place I read, Isaiah 54, it said, enlarge the place of your tents and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. It said, stretch yourself. For you to excel in any area of life, not only ministry, you need to stretch yourself. To become expert in any field, you have to stretch yourself. So, in growing to the level of commanding extraordinary results spiritually, you need to stretch yourself in the study of the word. You need to stretch yourself in prayers. You need to stretch yourself in fellowship with God. You need to stretch yourself in commitment to God's business. Also, in attaining higher levels in business, in career, or educational pursuits, you need to stretch yourself. But the truth is that stretching can be painful. Stretching can, will not be convenient. But you can go and ask those who excel in life and ministry. They will confirm this. You see somebody coming out with so many innovations that ordinarily people don't think about. When you go and ask that person, he will have stretched himself beyond the way the ordinary person will have done. So you need to stretch yourself like a, a, a student. You see, first class student. Um, the difference between a first class student and um, um, maybe third class student is um, uh, this way that person has um, stretched himself um, more than the other one, other person. Number two, endurance and long suffering. Endurance and long suffering. I'm talking about what you need to possess to, uh, to really um, increase your capacity. When you look at the life of Joseph and the early apostles, you will see that they, uh, they were able to enlarge their capacity because they were able to endure uh, the challenges that I believe God placed in their lives to help them to expand capacity to be able to handle greater challenges. Look at Joseph, for example. Joseph developed capacity to forgive his brethren through those challenges he has, he has gone through and uh, his perspective about life changed and he got to know that it was not because God wanted to punish him that he went through those uh, challenges he went through but because God chose him and prepared him to be the one that will be able to uh, bring out his family from um, low level or, or, or poverty level or, or uh, from low level to a, place, uh, to a place of influence. Because he told them, when they thought that it was going to revenge for what they have done, he said, I have now understood that it was because of you that God has sent me ahead so that I can be the helper of destiny to my family. 
So and uh, if his capacity had not been expanded, you will see that he will have even put them in prison, he will have dealt with them. But he had so many encounters with God that his, his horizon has expanded the Lord. And the way he was thinking was different from the way they, they, they were thinking. And you will see that he was able to manage his resources and men at a very higher level because of all the um, challenges he had. Somebody that was celebrated in his father's house became a slave. I don't know whether you even imagine it. You know, you can uh, picture it. You are celebrated, given the best schools. Then when you now became a slave, a slave in those days become the property of the person who has bought him. And he will now be washing the toilet, cleaning the, I mean, dirty works and all those things. And he does not have anything that he could call his own. But they said, they said he prospered. And he was doing it with so much diligence and grace that the owner of the house kept, they kept washing him and handed the, um, the, the, the management of the house into his hand. You see, that thing did not happen in one day. His fellow servants will have been making comments. The comments will have been getting to the man, and then the man will have been watching. And it was not that he was using different equipment to wash. He was using the same equipment the other people were using to do the cleaning, washing. But the way he was doing it, there were certain things that was manifesting that the man was saying that, ah, your own is better. And, you know, he managed that house, and you've seen that the next thing that should have happened was, should have been promotion. But instead of promotion, it was demotion. In the, in the, well, we look at it in the physical. It was put in prison for still, I mean, keeping faith with God. And in that place, they look at him again, they handed over the management of the prison into his hands. And it was enlarging his capacity. So it was not difficult for him when Pharaoh said that, who could I have handled this Egypto? He handled Egypto, Joseph. But many people will love that, but how many people would love to go through the pain of the stretching that God gave him before he got to a place where he could handle it. But those stretching gave him pain, gave him embarrassment, especially when they accused him that he raped somebody, he attempted to rape the master so and he did not do it. And he still kept his head. They put him in prison and he was still, I mean, I'm going about things happily because if he was depressed, he would not have done that thing that they would have handed that thing. Uh, he would not have um, performed so well that they would hand over prison to him. And at the end of the day, he came out because he stretched uh, himself. So, um, so uh, um, all he went through was designed to increase his capacity to function at that level. Okay. Let me quickly go because I have to see. So, I go to this. Let's see. Hunger for knowledge. Number three. Hunger for knowledge. Hunger for the leg. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Because Hosea chapter 4, it said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, knowledge is so critical in growing, in expanding your capacity. Uh, I know some years ago, there are so many diseases that just kill people, measles, um, Malaria and all those things. And, um, and um, when somebody had it, um, people came to Africa, Mongo Park, they died because of malaria and all those things. But with knowledge, the capa medical capacity was enlarged. And a lot of, and that's why um, people now don't die because of such. In fact, in uh, the place where I come from, so many little children died of polio. And then um, they died of because of lack of knowledge not about this, um, not knowing whether one is AS, what do you call that? AS? Yes. Genotype. Genotype. Sickle cell. Genotype. And they will say one which has killed this one, this one has done this one, and all those things. But, you know, our capacity became enlarged when we had knowledge. Let me quickly go. Uh, um, now, I want to talk about um, self discipline. Self discipline is so crucial. Um, when, okay, Daniel, 
and the Hebrew boys. They were in the foreign land. I won't, you, you can read um, Daniel 1. I, I won't read it because of time. Daniel 1, 8 and 15. So they were in that place. And um, the king was looking for the best brains in the land, including those who are immigrants who will come and serve him. And he said they should be giving them the best meals, the kind of meal that he was eating. And, uh, but these guys, I mean, <laughs> these guys, they said they won't, they, they won't spoil them, they defile them say, by eating from king's table. Now, this king's table, I, I, I began to think, how will it like? The king in those days, they are not like the king today. They are so powerful, and the, the kind of resources they command, and, and the kind of wine they take, and, all, and uh, they just pick you, an immigrant, you'll be drinking the wine of the king, the, king, the, the kind of meat he's eating. Even those of us now, when, you know, even we are doing 40 days and fasting, you get to, and they invite you to a party, and then you start looking at some things on the table. You start asking God, God help me, God help me, God help me. <laughs> ah, so somebody who has not even seen like somebody said in the, in the place I came from, that the first time, those days, the poverty was so rampant in land. The first time he ate fried egg was when he, was, he went to the, the house of his in-law he was about to marry. <laughs> when we were growing up, the, the only time we eat rice was on Sunday. <laughs> so this, they just came, and they slave, and now they say, be eating what, and, they say, and you say you won't eat it. Ah, it's great discipline. They have been trained in a certain way that when they got there, they refused to be polluted. I've seen so many people. They come from third world countries, and they were disciplined. They now get to places, hey, United Kingdom, U.S. You come here, and you'll be wondering, ah, was it that, that person that was so disciplined in life? Now you see that person being wayward and doing things, and then you get amazed about that. Self-discipline. So, so crucial. Okay, oh, so few minutes. So I, I talk about selflessness. Selflessness, um, uh, um, it's talking about you being concerned more about the needs and wishes of others more than they're your own. And uh, when you look at the book of Esther, you would think that the hero, hero of that book of Esther was Esther. But when I read it again, I saw it was Mordecai. Mordecai. Because it, 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 it was like the, guide, the guiding, the person that really, uh, really the main actor in that place. Yes. It was the one who inspired Esther. Esther did not even know her call. Mm -hmm. that the, the, what, it was the one who reminded him, her. And, and then when this, uh, the other person was plotting to destroy them, mm -hmm. it was Haman. He was the one who really... Uh, um, encourage Esther to do what she did, and then you, you know it, it was the one who, who, who made, uh, mobilized every person. And at the end of the day, I was looking at him. I said, "This is the main actor," and they put this people or oh, Esther. So, and so, and, uh, so, then quickly before it could set time to retreat and replenish. Uh, um, Matthew fourteen twenty three, uh, our Lord and Master. You see after. Doing all those things, you go and retreat, and uh, you know. And then, um, la 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 um, lastly, I have some other, but let me prayer. Prayer is so crucial. Um, Luke eleven one. I mean, prayer is so crucial. And you know, what happened was that the disciple of Jesus, they saw Jesus doing so many things, but they they, they, they would have been thinking, what is the source of his power? But they now look at something that they were the one who went to him to ask. Come and teach us how to pray. Because they discovered that there is something about this prayer thing. And they knew that it was like, what is the main thing? Apart from, you know, they study the word. You can, you can have the word. You can have those things. If you don't pray, you just be like a dynamite that could not be um, detonated. So I just want us to start just thanking God for uh, what God has deposited in us. Ask for grace to enlarge your capacity. You need to do it. Father, we thank you for your word. 
And uh, we pray that in any way we've come short or we've changed, or changed ourselves for what you want to give us by not enlarging our capacity. Lord, open our eyes and grant us grace to be able to do what we need to do so that what you have in stock for us will be released into our lives and our glory will be returned unto you. Thank you, faithful Father. For in Jesus' precious name we pray.